Thursday, October 20, 2004, and we are interviewing uh, the couple of Donald Greenebaum and Janet Greenebaum. Don, uh, let's turn to you first because I understand that you grew up in Milwaukee and Jan did not. That's correct. Uh, so let's, uh, let's focus a little bit on your background, um, if you will. Um, when were you born and where? April 29, 1925, in Columbia Hospital in Milwaukee. And uh, your parents lived in Milwaukee at the time, right? Right. And when did they come to Milwaukee, roughly speaking? Oh, about 1923 or 24. And they came from where? Chicago. Okay, and you're... In, in Chicago, was, you had a family business, or was there a family business? There was a family business in Chicago, and my grandfather sent my father to Milwaukee to start running a plant that he had purchased in Milwaukee. For the same company, is that For right? the same company, right. Okay. And, and what kind of plant? Do you want to talk about that business? Tanned leather. Okay. And... You're, you're, did both your parents grow up in Chicago then? Right. Okay. Then, when you grew up, where were you living? In, in Milwaukee. Yeah. Whereabouts in Milwaukee? Well, for the first five years, we lived in a duplex and the Shortcrest Hotel that we were building our home in Whitefish Bay. In 1929 or 1930, we moved into our new home in Whitefish Bay. And where was that in Whitefish Bay? 4720 North Kramer Street. Now, one of the questions we asked was a little bit about the neighborhood that you lived in. Can you describe that a little bit for us? Well, it was certainly not a Jewish neighborhood. It was uh, a very Christian neighborhood. It was a very, uh, I'd say, middle to high class neighborhood, only a few blocks from the lake, and um, the homes were very nice. And, and uh, did you have any Jewish neighbors? Not in the beginning, no. Later on we had a few. Okay. Um, did your family belong to a temple or synagogue? Yes, they belonged to uh, Temple Emmanuel. And, and did you attend uh, Sunday school there, or sir? I never went to Sunday school. I used to attend some high holiday services with my mother, and that's all I remember. Did, did, your, did your parents attend other than the high holiday services? No. Okay. Uh, well, um, did you identify yourself as being Jewish during this time? Well, I... I did not really have any occasion to do so, but I would have done so if uh, someone had asked. Your name has always been Greenbaum, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Um, and then where were you, where did you go to school, Don? Milwaukee University School, the only co-ed private school that was not a religious school. And, and were there many Jewish people in, in your class? Very few. And then where did you go from there? This was, was grade school and high school? All the way from kindergarten to, uh, to graduation uh, from high school. And that, and that was on Hartford Avenue, just, just west of Maryland, right? Right. And then, then from there, where did you go to school? Well, I went to Brown University for the first year after I was in high school. And I was in the Army for two and a half years. And then I came back and went to, back to Brown University for one year, and I began to work. Okay. Now, when you say, uh, when, when you grew up, Don, and up to the time you came back to Milwaukee to go to work, uh, were you aware of anti-Semitism? Well, I was aware that it existed. I didn't come in contact with it too much myself. You didn't? Not no. yourself? No. Um, then you came back here to go to work. Do you want to tell us about the work that you did when you came back? 
Well, I decided to go into the family business, which was tanning leather. And I started out at the uh, our plant on the north side, 32nd and Hampton. And uh, I started from the ground up, going through each department, learning how they do things, trying to learn the business. Later on, I was transferred to the south side plant, which was, uh, well, we did, did different things than they did on the north side plant. We made, uh, we made um, cordovan leather for uh, dress shoes, which we didn't do in the north side plant. North side plant, we made work shoe leather. Southside plant was a nice challenge for me. I uh, went through all the various departments. I ended up in purchasing, and that's why I, I enjoy doing that very much. And then, um, and then eventually, did you have your own business? Well, eventually, uh, we sold the tanning. The tanning company was uh, liquidated. That was in 1958. Then I uh, went into my own business. And then after that, you did that for a while, and then I understand you have done some other things since your own business, too. Yeah, right. I was in the uh, material handling field for a while. residential real estate for a while. Um, then I became interested in the travel business and worked as a travel agent for some time. Okay, well now, um, you've also been involved uh, in the Jewish community in a number of ways and during all this time. Would you uh, tell us a little bit about that, please? Well, I've been involved in uh, you mean Jewish organizations? Yes, sir. The Jewish National Fund. I've been on the board for a number of years. Uh, on the board of the American Jewish Committee. I was a founding member of Congregation of Sinai. It was a very interesting experience. When was that approximately? In the mid-50s, 1954. Started. And weren't you honored by Brotherhood there at Sinai? Yeah, in 1973 I was the Brotherhood Man of the Year, I believe they called it. Um, Don, one of the other questions we're asking people is how they connect to Israel, your experience with Israel and how you relate to Israel. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I've been there a number of times. Jan has, of course, been very active uh, in the Jewish Federation. And I found a, a strong affinity towards Israel. And I'm very pleased with what they're doing. And uh, I'm, I'm all for them, 100%. And uh, I'm looking forward to our next trip. I'm not sure when that's going to be. But it won't be too long. We'll be back there. Okay. And now let me ask how you see the present and future of the Milwaukee Jewish community. Well, I see it as maintaining its wonderful position as a strong, dynamic leader of the smaller communities. I mean, we, for a community of only around 24, 25,000 Jews, we have maintained a wonderful position of leadership and fundraising for uh, local and overseas needs. And I see this continuing. We're building a strong leadership group of younger people today, which is wonderful. Um, Don, one question we've asked is, how? what are you the most proud of? You don't have to answer that. Is there anything that you 
are very proud of. And let me couple that with another question. Uh, how would you like to be remembered? Well, I'd like to be remembered as someone who tried to give something to the community. I'm not sure just what, but um, what was the first part of that, Alan? Uh, um, what are you the most proud of, most proud if, of. if that relates one way to the other? <laughs> That's a tough one. Uh, I'm most proud, really, of, of what, what Janice been able to accomplish as a citizen of Wisconsin and as a member of the Jewish community. And also my children have done a pretty good job. Thank you. Is, is there anything you want to talk about that we didn't get to? And we're going to be interviewing Janet right after we're through with you. And if there's something that you think about, um, um, when we're through with Janet, we'll get back to you to ask you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be ready to talk. Okay, don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> now let's turn to Janet. Uh, now Janet, when did you come to Milwaukee? August 10th, 1950. Well now, how do you date it quite so precisely? That was the day I married Donald. Oh. Actually, I didn't come here until a month later because we had a honeymoon first. <laughs> All right. And, and you had lived in Chicago? I grew up in Highland Park. What was your father's, what was your maiden name? My maiden name was Lowenthal. And uh, your, what, what did your father do for business? My father was a paper jobber. He sold paper to printing companies and to um, tissue companies. Now, were both your parents born in the United States? Both of my parents were born in the United States, And, and yes. had they grown up in Chicago also? They grew up on the south side of Chicago, yes, in a predominantly German-Jewish community. Ah. And, uh, What were your first family members to settle in the United States, do you know? I know that my father's grandfather came to the United States, and I'm not certain when it was, but it would be, I would think sometime no later than the 1860s. It might have been earlier. And he was in banking. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm going to skip over some of the questions I asked Don because you didn't grow up here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and turn now to an important question. Tell me about your children. Tell you about my children. We have four bright, successful children. The oldest, Muriel, works for Grove Atlantic Publisher. She is a I never can remember what the title is, but she is responsible for the production. I guess she's production manager right. for Grove Atlantic Press in New York City. She lives in Teaneck, New Jersey. Her oldest daughter is the mother of Eli Max, who is Muriel's grandson, our great-grandson. Muriel also has a daughter, Rebecca, who is working in Worcester, Massachusetts, and Benjamin, who is on the road as a musician. All right, move on to the next one. Okay, Donald, Donald nice. Jr. and his wife, Beth. Donald is a an engineer, he works, I'm not sure what, with computers, and I don't understand the thing he does. <laughs> he, he's married and has children. He is married and has children. Nathan oh. is 19, Mara is 17, is 16, excuse me, Mara. Peggy is married to Jim Presley. Peggy is a program manager for Head Start. Naomi. Pe Peggy is another child. Peggy is Peggy our is third Margaret. child. She's yes, Margaret. She's Margaret. Okay. Yes, but she's Peggy. 
sure. because I thought if, if I ever had a daughter who went to the Supreme Court, I didn't think that Judge Peggy would sound right. <laughs> uh, Naomi is 17 and will be graduating. Naomi was just two weeks ago the homecoming queen at Monona Grove High School <laughs> outside of Madison. Uh, Ted is our youngest child, Edward. He, ha he is a science teacher, middle school in Oakland, California. He has a three-year-old daughter, Zoe. And those are our family. Now, I'm going to ask you a question you don't have to answer. All right. Um, your birth date and place. I was born in Chicago, Illinois, at Michael Reese Hospital, November 7th, 1930. Thank I you. am not ashamed of it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> and let's, let's continue. Um, as you were growing up, did your family in Chicago belong to a temple or a synagogue? They belonged to North Shore Congregation Israel. I went to Sunday school from the time I was in fifth grade. I was confirmed. My parents were non-religious. We had a Christmas tree. We had Easter egg hunts, all the good stuff. Um, <clears throat> well, were you happy to be Jewish during this time? No. You were. No, I, there was anti-Semitism in my life. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about it until I got to high school. I went to North Shore Country Day School. I did not go to Highland Park High School. And I was the only Jewish girl in my class. Uh, when I went to high school, there were still restrictive covenants. My classmates had parties at the country clubs, and I could not go. I was not invited to go because I was Jewish. And your name was Lowenthal. My name was Lowenthal, yeah. Um. I survived. But when you came here, and then, oh, where did you go to college? Then? I had one year at Connecticut <clears throat> College for women, and then I got married. <laughs> and then you came to Milwaukee. And then I came to Milwaukee. Okay. Um, well, let's tell us some about <clears throat> some of the things you've done in Milwaukee in this long uh, list that I have here. <laughs> some of the things I have done in Milwaukee. Well, particularly with the Jewish community. Um, the first thing I did in Milwaukee, the first thing I did in Milwaukee, I was invited to become a member of the Children's Outing Association, which at that time was a Jewish women's organization. It has grown, it has expanded, there have been male presidents, but at that time it was only women. And I was recommended by Edith Neiser, who used to live in Milwaukee. And so that was the first thing I did. I didn't know anybody, and all of a sudden, I was involved in this absolutely fabulous organization. And then Don said in 1954, a group of people wanted to start a new congregation for any number of political reasons. And uh, so we got involved at Congregation Sinai. And uh, it was You've just been very involved there. Tell us some of the things. Uh, you've done well, at I was sisterhood president. <coughs> I was president of the congregation. When I, was that, Jan? I don't even remember, Alan. It was when <sighs> the late well, '70s, probably. Okay, that's my recollection also. Yeah. Um, I've been on committees even after the presidency. Um, Don and I still go to service uh, to um, class on Saturday mornings, Torah study with the rabbi. I go Wednesday mornings to the sisterhood study with the rabbi. We're in Psalms now. <laughs> um, I've also been involved. I've been on the board of the Jewish Federation. I was women's campaign chair. I think in 1978, does that sound about right? Yeah. Um, How about Hadassah? Were you involved in I, I'm involved in Hadassah. I'm involved in Na'amat, which used to be Pioneer Women. I was on the board of the 
Jewish National Fund. I was on the board of the Jewish Family, at that time Jewish Family and Children's Service. I was on the board of Mount Sinai Hospital. I was even on the board of the Jewish Vocational Service <laughs> one time. I, um, I hit them all. <laughs> Which one of these do you, did you find to be the most satisfying? Possi probably the Federation. Why? Because I learned the most. I, I really learned a strong sense of Judaism from working with the Federation. I've met wonderful people. And you're still, <clears throat> and still involved with the Federation? Um, well, you're here to a today. Certain, to <laughs> a certain extent, yes, I am still involved. Um, okay. They still give me cards to solicit every year. <laughs> Let, let's turn to Israel for a minute. <clears throat> um, I know you've been there many times. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, the number of trips and what you've done there and how you connect to Israel? Well, our first trip was 1970. And our second trip was 1973, and then there was 1976, and then I lost count. <laughs> um, it's just a tug on the heartstrings to me. It's, it's, it's changing and it's staying the same, and it's, it's just a, a really very personal feeling that I have. Well, you've been active on fundraising for Israel, haven't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> what, what did you do there? Fundraising? Mm -hmm. Well, there's Jewish National Fund, as I said. There's Hadassah. There's Na'amat. Were you involved with bond sales also? Um, no. Actually, nobody's ever asked me. Okay. I, someplace I've heard of that. <coughs> now, um, continuing, then, with your Jewish relationships, <clears throat> I, I understand that you had a bat mitzvah. Yes. When you were, what, 14? When I was 50. It was on my 50th birthday, <laughs> as a matter of fact. And, and where did you have that? At Sinai. Congregation Sinai. Congregation Sinai. It was the Midwest um, region temple whatever it was, and uh, the service was at our synagogue, and I did the service, and it, it was just a and fabulous you, you, experience. You had a lot of people in the audience. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, including you and Pat, <laughs> yes. including <laughs> Leah, who was <laughs> about two years old at the time, our oldest granddaughter. Mm -hmm. My mother sat in the, about the fourth row and kept wiping her <laughs> eyes. <laughs> she had not been bought this one. No. She really thought I was becoming orthodox because I was turning towards Judaism. <clears throat> now, Jan, how do you see the present, <clears throat> pardon me, and future Milwaukee Jewish community? Uh, the present, <clears throat> I think, is very strong. I agree with Don on that. I, um, I think the young people in Milwaukee, uh, the young Jewish people in Milwaukee, are committed, at least the ones I know. I, I think we always have to keep working at getting people involved and getting people to understand the importance of a strong Jewish community. <coughs> whether it's here or in Israel. Let me step a, a related question. You and Don have been very generous of not only your time, but your funds. <coughs> and uh, can you talk a little bit about why you were, both of you were so generous financially and your own time in, in helping the Jewish community? The community as a whole, but particularly the Jewish community. My mother's mother was a very generous woman. My parents were generous people. I saw them giving of their time and their dollars to the community. And it was just something I grew up, grew up knowing 
was important. And it's no more than that. Well then, Jen, um, what are you the most proud of and how would you like to be remembered? And you can do one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what I'm most proud of is that we've given our children a strong sense of their Judaism. And it's a positive feeling that they have. Our grandchildren are happy and involved being Jewish. And that to me is, is something to be really proud of. I want to be remembered as somebody who was able to give something to the Jewish community. Now, we've gone through a lot of questions. Is there something that you want to talk about that we didn't get to? No, I don't think so. Okay, Don, what have we forgotten about either of you? You get the last word. <clears throat> oh, I don't think you missed anything, Alan. Did a very good job. Okay, well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. and. Uh, Appreciate both of you coming in here.